works and which one doesn't. There's something in the trunk rolling around. It still doesn't stop. Lots of squeaking going on. Is that you? This clock down here keeps terrible time. At the moment, it does not appear to be falling apart. Uh-oh. Welcome back. Um, it's all gone. Because uh, I got some shiny stuff that I have to put on. That's the super evolved knuckle from Techno Toy Tuning. Allows you to do race car Ackerman or drift Ackerman and a couple of different positions for uh, steering. You can use their um, fancy spherical or whatever ended, um, like heme jointed, I don't know, um, tie rod ends, or you can use factory tie rod ends, which is, you know, what I got in here. So, uh, we're going to take, uh, that knuckle off, put that knuckle on. And then because I don't trust the probably 10 year old unused, but 10 year old strut inserts that are in these uprights of, uh, I got new ones. These are actually rear strut inserts for a SW20 MR2. And that's what this strut tube has been cut to. This AE86 strut tube has been cut down to that size. Uh, Rewelded with the perch on it and all that stuff. All this work was done long, long ago. But anyway, we're going to take this apart, put the new strut tube in, even though that one, man, it pushes strong. I'm... I'm not sure that one's not just fine, but I, hey, I got a new one right here. So we'll keep that one on reserve. The other one I know is pretty much dead. So, and I already did it. So we'll, we'll do a comparison of a dead one and a new one uh, here in a little bit. But yeah, that's the plan for right now. Swap the strut insert and then get in the new knuckle. This is not licensed music because I cannot use licensed music in my videos. So I play my guitar and I sing a song for you. Gotta be careful when working with these top hats. 60 millimeter, not top hats, what do we call them. I don't know. Strut hat screw. They got really fine threads and they want to go in sideways. So you just gotta. You'll think, oh, it's time to tighten it. It's not, it's really not time to tighten it yet. You just got it crooked, so it's hard to get it straight, especially when the whole setup is crooked to begin with. And with all the stuff in the threads, it just wants to go sideways. I don't have my pipe wrench right now, so I'm kind of limited to this big pair of channel locks. And I'm tempted to use them right now. But it feels real crunchy, and it looks crooked, is what it looks. But I'll give it a turn, see if it feels like it's going to let me keep spinning, or no, it doesn't. It doesn't at all. So, I know how many threads came out of there, and it was a lot more than what are trying to go back in. So, I think the problem is, you know, the strut has a little bit of play in there and you just gotta you just gotta maybe wiggle it around a little bit while you I don't know I don't know the right answer here that felt really good it like made good noises but no nah, it's just not right and this is mind you it's the exact same one that just came off of here it goes down about six threads six full threads so I can see the the line on it where it used to go to. That's where I'm going to put it back, but it's not screwing on the same way it came off, so it's bothersome. Had to bring you in a little closer because I just sort of stumbled upon the answer how to do this the right way. Maybe the right way, you know, is re relative, but pull your strut insert up, pull that gland nut, gland nut, that's what they're called back down on top of the strut, bring it down into the tube, 
keep pulling up on the strut insert while you spin it and that'll make sure it goes on straight see how much easier that is sometimes i just got to use my thinker and i'll think about the right solution One more little nudge there. I don't think it's gonna come apart though. Okay, that's good. This spring, right here. Uh, it's a QA1 350, 350 pound spring. I think the originals came with a 700 pound spring in the front from Techno Toy. I'm gonna check some notes right now and see what uh, spring a buddy of mine, oh, you got it really close in on me right now. How's that, is that looking good? I'm gonna check some of my notes on the phone that's recording the video and see what I can find out about spring rates real quick. So I didn't find anything, but I did recall something. This dinky little spring, seven inch, 350 pound spring is not the spring that came with the Techno Toy pullovers. That was a, I'm gonna say 400 pound, six inch spring, which now resides on my FX16. So I got the next best thing, which is this 350, seven inch spring. It might be a little soft, but it'll be better on the street, you know? Time will tell. The problem is, I'm pretty sure I have a 400 pound spring in the back. Maybe I went with a 300. I don't know. I don't have a sway bar in the back, though. So, you know, maybe a little heavier is okay. I do have a sway bar in the front. So maybe a little lighter is okay. Well, we're going to find out because this is what I have. That's what's going on. We'll follow that with the uh, alien spaceship and the... Uh, coilover uh, thing with the tiny uh, needle bearings that I've probably tried to lose a million times. And yeah, I think that's ready to go back on the car after we do our knuckle work. So we're going to leave it here, go back over to the car, work out those knuckles. Okay. Now that you're done looking at my crotch, Let's look at this knuckle. The, there's a castle nut to the ball joint. It's a 19. The only 19 I can find right now is this one that's meant for taking off uh, crank bolts. It seems to work pretty good on this. That spins it right off of there. And then over here is a 17 on the tie rod end. We'll zip that off. And then we have to, you know, break the joints. So for this one, I've resorted to this terribly janky pickle fork, and I don't like it, but it's all I've got. My um, my puller is absent at the moment. It, it walked away. Wish I would have left everything else together where I did this. Hey, there she goes. I would say same story for this one, but... Um, I got a puller, and it kind of works, kind of doesn't. We'll still put the castle nut on to protect the threads. And on the top there, it's dished, so that's nice, and it's kind of already set because I did the last one. On the, I did the one on the other side already. So, eh, it's a little bit... There we go. I got my, my infinite wrench. The every wrench. This is fun. Oh boy. Oh boy. We come loose already. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> okay. Huh? Then we're pulling on that. Frightening. It just this these haven't been run at all, so um, makes sense that they wouldn't be. Tight. So, out with the old, in with the beautifully new. Oh yeah, that's pretty. Um, this guy's gonna go in the back hole. 
forward. Quickened steering response, but before it goes in the hole, it needs this little collar guy for these factory tie rod ends, factory style tie rod ends. If you had the T3 tie rod ends, then you could use, uh, you know, straight hole, but you can't. So back on with the castle nut. Oh, also, the consult the manual for the uh, super advanced knuckles on which way these inserts should be set. I have set it for race Ackerman. I think if you flop them, then you get drift Ackerman. What's Ackerman? Well, I have no idea, but I don't want to drift. I want to race. <laughs> so this is the race Ackerman. Um, you know, maybe I'll try to insert an explanation of Ackerman here. Essentially, it boils down to all of your wheels rotating around the same point in space, but I am not going to be able to explain that properly because I am not Jason Fenske. You know who is Jason Fenske? Jason Fenske. There's a link to Engineering Explains video about Ackerman in the description. Okay. That's the explanation of Ackerman's out of the way. I knew it all along. Uh, okay. I'm going to put this castle nut back on here for the tie rod end. And I, I really only have to tighten this one at the moment. And I'm going to use this big old honking 19 again to power it down. It's going to be fun. Yeah. It's down. It's down real good. Okay. A lot of people would say, don't use the impact there, and they would be right. Insert that that away. Move these pliers in here and pull just this one up over the top. Lovely. I have to bring that strut in here. And before I put it up here, I have to compress it down so that I can slip it in quickly, mind you, and get it in over top of the knuckle. And it's not easy to do. I'm here to tell you because I did it on the other side and it was not fun, nor was it easy. I'm gonna struggle with this, but in the end I will get it done. All right, here's my redneck method. You know, just let it sit on the rotor, your brand new rotor. I mean, put it on something soft at least. Put the nut on the top, I hope you can see that. And uh, make it so you're pressing on the nut, but not pressing on the little stem that's uh... Okay, already I'm incredibly alarmed. That one was really hard to push in. This one, it just pushes right down, like it's on full soft or something. So I'm gonna try to kind of hold this in. While I take the nut off, because now we gotta get up through the hole. And that means that I have to sit down. None of this is fun. <clears throat> push it back down again, best you can. Oh my God, it's so Heavy. Try not to hurt yourself here, kids. It's already fully extended, and I missed my window. So now I get to push it up right here. Oh, shit. It's still not on there. Uh, you have to get it to sit on these guides. Those Ackerman guides I showed you, I think. I know what we're looking for. Yeah. Well, whatever. They go on there. Okay. It's not there. Absolutely not there yet. Oh my god. Push myself up in this hole. Twist. Okay. I think we're there. It's a pain, but now you put your bolts up through. And you hope that you don't have to take all this off because you have roll center adjusters. And more than likely, I'm going to need them. I've assembled it without them right now in hopes that I don't need them, but I will. By the by, 
astute observers may be noticing this brake line. That's completely disconnected. And uh, no fluids dripping out at all. That's because I let the master go dry. So now we get to bench bleed the front circuit of the master cylinder, which is going to be awesome. I'm going to spin this threaded collar back up to about the middle. We'll count the number of um, threads from the bottom up before we actually set the whole thing down and make sure that we've got it set reasonably right, but I'm not going to tighten anything until it's on the ground and I can see how low it is because I don't have any idea how low it's going to sit with this 7-inch spring, 350 pounds. No clue. But we'll get it reasonably even before we put it all down on the ground, which I think is coming real soon. Could be. Could be now. I need to look up AGX strut adjustment as well and figure out how you get them to like full one way or the other because I spun the thingy for a while at the top and it just felt like they just kept turning so I don't like there's no clicks like there are on uh conies at least I've heard of I've never had conies so I don't really know but in any case I gotta figure out how to adjust on them see that dog over there he's afraid for his life it's okay Sam hmm Sunlight, face, good. So it turns out I don't have a single jack at this location. So I'm gonna call it for today, go get a jack, and then we will get the wheels on the car, plop it on the ground, see how it looks, learn how to adjust AGX shocks, and then we've got some brake work to do. Sam and I here, this is Sam. We're headed back to the homestead now. We'll get a jack, we'll come back, we'll put Dale on the ground. It'll be a glorious time. Um, until then... Uh, Ryan did some racing today in the, uh, in the Charlie Bigsby need Needs a Kidney MGB GTS. What'd I hit? I hit a button. Um, he was out rally crossing and he won modified rear wheel drive in the Kansas City region. Uh, as he most often does, that's his thing. It's kind of his thing. Um, the big, the big news of the day, though, near and dear to my heart. Uh, Blake and Tyra in Tyra's Honda Fit, beautiful purple Honda Fit. They ran in prepared front wheel drive class in today's event. Look out, squirrel! And Blake bested all of the times for the modified front wheel drive cars in a fit he beat turbocharged fiesta sts and crazy gti's and all manner of stuff he whooped them in the fit and tyra came real close she beat most of their times i think um she was about 10 seconds off or something i can't remember but kudos to those kiddos, kiddos, I mean, I'm old, so I call everybody kid, uh, from uh, Huff Racing. Good job. Honda Fit, God's Chariot. I am so happy. It's the best news of my day, to be honest with you. Like, I love working on my car and succeeding, and I would love racing and doing well myself, but man, when I see that Honda Fit <laughs> doing good. Oh, believe in the Honda Fit, people. I've said it before. I will say it again. Believe in the Honda Fit. Uh-oh. Clean all these off. I don't know which one is which. I'm going to move on to the, uh, the alignment, the rough alignment that I have to do just to get this thing down the road. I've put on T3's Techno Choi Tuning's advanced knuckles, and they have two spots for the tie rods to attach. One that's closer to the strut, one that's further away. I've chosen the one that is closer to the strut because it's supposed to give you quicker steering, but that means that I'm probably going to be towed out now. So I'm going to use the tires and the lines on the tires to try to get the tow even front to back, just enough to be able to drive it, and then I'll take it somewhere for a proper alignment. Okay, so I got the handy dandy millimeter tape measure donated to me by some guys who fixed go-kart stuff for me long ago and left it on my go-kart. What we got up front 
is from the inside edge <clears throat> of the outside center stripe. See how there's two center stripes? I'll zoom in on it as much as I can. Two center stripes on that wheel. I'm going, I'm going from this one, the inside edge, to the inside edge on the other one. 140.5 millimeters is what I got up front. 133 in the rear. No, 133.5. 133 and a half. So we have seven millimeters total that needs to be made up, which means I'm gonna bring it in three and a half on either side. Seems pretty simple. It's not, but I'll just move this tie rod until I have three and a half in and uh, until, until the tire, I don't know how I'm gonna do that. I suppose what I should do Use my tape measure after I've spun it in some. Oh my god, it moves so fast. That's out. We need to go in. We were at 133 and a half. If I move it to math, 137. This dumb tape measure. I mean, it's good, but you know, tape measures. Okay. So, I said 100, what'd I say? Seven was what I needed to move total, and it was towed out. So I gotta move it out three and a half from the 130, three and a half that it was at, and it looks like it's about 133 and a half. Hope I don't run out of threads. I mean, I'm out at 135 and a half, and I feel like I'm about to run out of threads. Let's see how far I could go, though. I don't remember how much thread I have here, so. There's 136 and a half. That'd be the three that I need. The thing is, we're closing the gap on the front. Let, let me just measure the front now. It's at 137 and a half up here right now so I think I have come back the other way I think I'm gonna eyeball it is what I'm gonna do and try to just get it straight in the hole visually and then I'll go from there you got some good reference points up here in the fender and whatnot kind of get it relatively straight it's hard to do from down here but I'm gonna call that one good I'm gonna go loosen the other one okay over to the other side to perform more non-exact science, tie rod tubes are all relatively new, so everything still moves and breaks apart, etc. So this one I'm going to go ahead and straighten up, same as I did the other side, try to get it as straight as I can. After I get these squared up, I'm going to put the whole thing Get, get the jack stands out from under, get it on a jack, and get it just close enough to the ground to where it takes up the weight, but I can still turn the wheels pretty easily. <clears throat> with the, uh, oh man, with the tie rod in. I tell you what, this tape measure is gonna fit. 136.3 on the top, or on the front. Well, I never, in all my years, 137 and a half on this side. So we're still out total. Measure from something I can get to here. And just move it out a quarter of a centimeter. Tow it out a quarter. There we go. Let's see if I can hook that tire. I know I can't. All right, we'll do this again. Oh my God. Ooh. 137. 137. All right, so let's get the jack, jack it up, and uh, bring it down enough to where I can still adjust things. See, we got left tire down before we get right tire down. So, the odds of me being able to have both of them touching the floor, still able to move them with the tire rod ends, pretty slim, so. I think we're just gonna have to settle for something 
in this vicinity. Eyeballing it, it looks pretty towed out in the front. Uh, on the left, it looks pretty towed out on the left and on the right, but it has gained some camber. I'll show you. I'm gonna slide around the side here. You can kind of see the toe, I'm sure. Same for this side. But the camber, my goodness. Camber gang. I just want to real quick answer the question of can I turn the tire rods? The answer is yes. Okay, I didn't think I would be able to. Now I screwed this one up. It's okay. We're on the ground. I feel like we got a better shot at doing this now. I can turn this one, but I bet you I won't be able to turn that one. But I gotta turn them both equal. Otherwise, I'm doing something dumb. Are you enjoying looking at my head? My bald spot. 138 and a half. Oh my god. 137. I don't remember what I said on the front. 138.5. I'll, I'll just try to adjust both sides. Let's see what that does. Oh my god, that's a lot. That's a whole lot. That's it. Come on now, 136.8. In the rear and up front. It's barely hanging on over there. It's gonna come off, yeah. A buddy would be nice right here. To have a buddy. Get you an alignment buddy. Alignment buddy! Now available at Kmart. 136.8, goddammit. Son of a bitch! Let's see if the shoulder on that one's a little bit better. Oh, just as bad. 138 in the front. That's real bad. You know what? I'm going to drop this. I guess like that. Oh, yeah, that's right. I have new suspension on here. And everything's really low. And it seems like it's sitting sort of statically. Oh, yeah, because it can't clear the, the jack. Cool. Sometimes you just don't have the time or the will to set up a shot. Here we are again. Wheels are back off. Um, after having the wheels on and finding out the suspension was rock solid. That's because uh, the springs that are on there are uh, 7 inch tall, 350 pound QA1 springs. And the springs that originally came with the coilover kit from Techno Toy Tuning long, long ago when this was purchased by someone else, bought by me secondhand, were 8 inch, 400 pound. I'm hoping that that's going to be enough. Where the collars set back in here, you know, <laughs> I had to put it up way up high. I'm supposed to be able to have two inches of adjustability up or down. Right now, it's looking like I'm going to have uh, maybe like an inch and a half up and three down from factory. Anyway, I already did the other side. Uh, this is a pain in the ass. I have to uh, disconnect uh, the strut from the knuckle and then up top do the three strut hat bolts and then I can position this thing on top of something while I tilt it out and do the work required to change out the spring. Uh, then put in a bump stop because I idiot that I am, I didn't put in any bump stops, so good time to do that. Um, and then put it all back together again. It's not fun. Not at all. I'll, uh, maybe I'll time lapse it. I don't know. It's going to take me a while. This is the part of the show where I do a time lapse and I show you the things that I've done in fast forward motion so you can't sue me because this isn't licensed music. Okay, clearly that time lapse was a lie. I don't have enough time to do it right now, but this side is done. It's lower than that side. It has no spring to it whatsoever. It is completely solid. I don't feel like it's high enough. It's very low. 
I mean, it matches the back, but I don't know. Back once again to hit this left front. I have two days left before a track day. Tomorrow, 10.30 a.m., this car is supposed to get a front-end toe alignment because mine is not going to be perfect, and I want to get it perfect. So this car has to run and drive and move tomorrow. So we're going to time-lapse it. I'm going to get this done. I'm going to listen to my book. I'm going to be happy. And uh, hopefully this will be done here in an hour or so. And then I'll hopefully be able to drive the car. It's a real one. And I'm getting it done with my hands and stuff and fast forward motion. If you're one of the four people who've watched the videos on this channel long enough, you know that I don't do anything the right way. This is most decidedly the wrong way to replace your springs and put in bump stops. I probably ruined a brake line. It's not leaking down here, it's leaking at the fitting, but this is so heavy. It's so, like, it's so awkwardly heavy, and especially with this collar on here, you can't grab here, you have to grab below the perch that, that was welded on. Oh my god. What a struggle. The time lapse could not have possibly conveyed the struggle that it was. And I'm still not done. Oh, you thought I was done, but I'm back again. Singing the song that has no actual words. It's only me ranting about how I can't use licensed music in any of my videos. Because if I did, then I would get sued. I don't make any money from this. Suing me would be ridiculous. I'd go to court, I'd wear a suit, and people would point and laugh at me. Because I look stupid in a suit, and I don't- I'm pooped. I gotta lower this slow. It keeps clanging down. Easy now. Yeah, still clangs, but... Unladen suspension becomes laden suspension. I mean, that's a good deal of gap. I think I got her up a little bit too high. It's about even, as far as rake is concerned. Yeah? I mean, I could measure by hand here. So I can get my whole hand in that gap right now. A little less over here. But the floor is, you know, like this. Hard to say. <laughs> in my crappy garage. Next up on the list is uh, continuing to try to straighten out the uh, toe, even though, once again, the floor is trash. Um, I do need to try to get this toe in line, to toe the line. <laughs> See what I did there? Right now, the tie rod tubes are not tight. I need to tighten those down. I'm gonna measure one more time though. I'm probably gonna end up playing with this a bunch, but <coughs> I'll jack it up just enough to be able to move the wheels when I when I turn the toe rods. And um, I'll see if I can get a good measurement on it. And then hopefully I can get it evened out and start driving it down the road. Oh, I might wanna tighten the, the spring cups. That'd be a good idea. All right, it's time to clean things up. Make sure uh, no errant stuff is sitting around. Are these attached? Yeah, they are attached, that's nice. Uh, I think we're gonna drive this vehicle. Now, the only remaining question that I have at the moment, let's just add that to the pile, uh, is these KYB AGX struts and how they are adjusted. What I think they are on is two. I think this because there's number two right here and uh, the knob only goes on one way, right? And the only discernible notch or any kind of indicator in this thing is that little guy right there. So I think whatever's pointed at that little guy is what setting I'm going to be on. So I think I'm on two right now. I also think that these are just gonna fall off of here. So I'm probably gonna take them off uh, while I drive the car. Um, but yeah, that's, that's as good of a guess as I can make. The internet has no help for me in this situation. Um, I don't really know why, but 
um, it shows you how to adjust ones that need a screwdriver to adjust, and then they show you how to adjust rear shocks that have a dial on the outside of them, but um, there's really no videos about these. So if I can figure this out definitively from any source, I'm going to make a good video about it and show all of you and everybody else how you adjust your KYB AGX adjustable inserts. For now, I think I have them on two, and I want to take this car for a drive with the new coilovers in place, locked down, and some reasonable amount of tow on the front. I hope it's relatively straight. We'll find out pretty quick. All right, ready to drive. Oh, uh, nope. Better open the garage door. I can get that stuff out of the way. That'll be all I have to do, and then we'll be on the road. Oh, nope. Gotta move more junk. Oh. Thankfully, it's idling. Something sounds funny in here. I'm just gonna see if I can get it to... Still got a real weird breathing sound or something. Huh. Like the fan bearings going or something. That would be great. Why am I putting my seatbelt on? Straight out. The steering wheel is major league crooked. Let's go for a drive. Why not? Who's gonna stop me? Well, the front suspension is suspensing. The car is driving reasonably straight. The steering wheel is crooked. I'm not trailing any fluids behind me. The brakes are rock solid. Um, Dale turns real good now. Dale turns real, real good. Uh-oh. I just pushed them in, and they... I felt them jump past a point. Like I squirted a bunch of fluid out or something. Can't remember which blinker works and which one doesn't. The right one worked. Spacers. Good business. That's a 25 millimeter spacer with as much camber as he's got on the strut. It looks pretty good. Dropped it down a little too. All right, I'm back in the wheel well here because we are rubbing very badly uh, here, all back through here. And then um, just a slight rub, you know, here. <laughs> Definitely tried to slice my tire is what I tried to do. So uh, I'm gonna use uh, some, you know, surgical tools. Try to remove some more off of here. And then we'll use a surgical three pound hammer and beat the living bejesus out of that and see if we can't uh, clear some clear some space back here and stop slicing the tires up. Uh-oh. Glad I went with 
have the option to not use a powered saw. Look at all the Bondo in there. Okay. Yep. There's that. Boy, oh boy. What a bunch of work here. Yeah, I'm gonna get the wheel of death. I don't want to breathe in all the fiberglass dust, so I tied these towels around my head. It won't work, but I'll pretend like it does. It reeks of Bondo. <coughs> I think that'll take care of the clearance issues. The profile is a little weird. I almost want to cup that. But I think from the front, it's gonna look funny. If I cup that guy, I don't know. I don't really wanna cut into that line right there. So I'm gonna leave it like that and see if that clears. Now we're gonna get a hammer and we're gonna beat the crap out of that. This is some hammering music because we're hammering and grinding on things. This is the hammering song and the grind. That was not a very long time lapse. Um, I think, I think I may have moved it back enough to where the tire will clear, ground off this bit a little bit, started to hammer on it, and the whole, you know, area right here started to cave in. So I don't think I'm going to touch that anymore because that's real soft metal, um, due to be replaced at some point in the future for sure. But for now, we're just going to grind this guy. We ground that guy back. Uh, it's not sharp. And then uh, this fella here, I'm worried about I'm worried about this flap pulling up and doing something. So I might, I mean, I can't really beat it down. Not flat anyway, because it, it just wants to have an edge there. So um, ah, I don't know what to do about that. Hopefully the tire won't catch on it when it's coming back through. I think it looks pretty flat here now, but let's, we'll clean up, put the wheel back on, put it on the ground and see what we get. I lied, instead we've come over to the passenger side to do the same sort of surgery. A rub in here. So we'll hit it with stuff. We'll grind that guy off just like we did on the other side. And uh, the front though, the front's intact. Not really sure how, but clean stuff up, put both wheels back on, and then um, test out and see if this one rubs. Clearly so far, I mean, it doesn't look rubbed at all. There's still paint on it. So I'm not worried about this side. Okay then, <clears throat> with the second verse being largely the same as the first, the hammer, the wheel of death, We've slimmed it out a little bit, but I think it's still gonna rub. And now we got some shardy stuff going on here where we got panels coming apart between the two. So, uh, you know, my delicate body work has ruffled a few feathers here, but that's, that's okay. I don't want my tires to rub. I think really what I could do is, uh, probably the proper way to do this would be to adjust the caster with this Tire rod, I'm not sure how much I could actually get out of that though. I think it might be, it's at zero right now, says the alignment machine, um, if they checked it at all. But um, I'm not sure, maybe I could get more out of it. I'll try to drag it forward some just to clear this stuff, but I'm gonna clean up and put the wheels back on and give it another test. After a survey of both sides, we're clear here, just fine. We're still not clear on the back side of this one. Always clear on the front of the passenger side, but not clear on the back of the passenger side. My play is to bring the front up a half an inch and get that clearance back. It'll still hit on compression, bounce me off, <laughs> probably bounce me down the road, but <clears throat> at least it won't hit if the suspension is straight. So I could probably come up a whole inch. This is a goddamn dog. Come out of here. I could probably come up a whole inch in the front. And it wouldn't look as good. We're not gonna be looking sick. 
but I think it's better to be able to turn the wheel all the way than to look sick. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna dial it up. And I'll start over here. If memory serves, I'm 17 up from the bottom. I'm sitting on the 17th one. I mean, this is not exact science. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go up five of those. Loosen the collar. Collar's loose. Start spinning. We're up one. You know, why don't I count them? That would mean that we need to be at 22. I'm just gonna go up and then I'll count my way up here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, sitting on 20. 21. I can just see the bottom of that ridge. You can't see any of this at all, so it doesn't really matter. Turn this around, tighten it up. Yeah, five of them is probably a little over a half an inch, but I don't really care. This is gonna put it about maybe a little over stock height. The whole car is up about three quarters of an inch. Reason being, you know all that hammering I did in the front, we talked about that uh, to get the fronts to clear and turn. And then in the rear, we've had the exhaust banging around for a while. So um, I thought just to make the ride height equal, uh, even, and it's still got a rake to it. You can see that it's still raked up in the back. Um, but I thought to make it closer to equal and even, I would just go ahead and raise the rear up and you know, it's had the added effect of reducing the amount of banging that the exhaust does against the rear end. And that's good too. So yeah, gonna do the timing business and uh, then maybe put him back out on the road again once or twice more before we load him up for track day tomorrow. Nope, didn't happen. The track day was supposed to be for Dale, but Dale, Dale wasn't ready to go. So instead, I loaded up my GR86 and I took it up to the Raceway Park in the Midlands, formerly known as Mid-America Motorplex uh, in Iowa. I've been there two or three times and this time in the GR86, I was able to turn my best time ever. Oh, come on. I put on some RE71 RSs earlier on in the autocross season, and I'd had them at a couple of autocrosses out at Solo Nationals, and then I did a track night in America at Heartland Park Topeka on them, and then I took them up to this track day and ran them around just fine. They seemed to be getting a little hot, but I wasn't too worried about it, and then I just lost my mind, I guess. I did a session, I let somebody else do a session, and somebody else did a session. I mean, we did like... I don't know, maybe 15 laps back to back and we burnt those tires. So uh, probably should have taken Dale, even though he would have most assuredly broken down on me, but I still would have at least been able to figure some things out, et cetera. But uh, it was still a good day um, and Dale still sat at home and uh, had just a couple of weeks left before the late Garnett Grand Prix revival, which is going to be the next video that I have coming up is about all about our experience at Lake Garnett and uh, what went down and uh, the the pain that we had to go through with Dale for that weekend. So tune back in uh, next time and uh, maybe it won't be so cold in the shop. Probably will be. It's December. Bye bye. It is crack there. Getting dirty, man. Just sitting here. I gotta put a new motor in you. <laughs>